hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a paper roll rack. Well, recently on one of my tip shows, I gave you the idea of using freezer paper on top of your tools or your bench while doing glue ups to prevent the glue from getting everywhere. And if you went out and bought one of these behemoth rolls, uh, it's pretty unruly and you kind of need a rack to put it in. And that's what we're going to make today. And it all starts off with some three quarter inch thick scrap plywood. So the diameter of our freezer paper is seven and a half inches. The roll is also 18 inches long. So what I've done is cut some three quarter inch ply and it is seven and a half inches wide by 20 inches long, giving us an inch extra on either end. So the first thing that I wanna do is lengthwise, I want to place a center mark. The next thing that I want to do is three inches in from either side, I will place a mark and as well in the center at 10 inches, I'm going to center punch and drill and countersink these three holes for mounting holes. Well, I've now cut a couple more pieces of plywood. They are half an inch thick. They are seven and a half inches wide, same as our mounting plate, but they are 12 inches long. So I will draw a center line along the length of each of these. And the first thing that I want to do is put from the center on one corner, it doesn't matter which one, but pick a corner, place a three and three quarter inch radius on one corner. Well, where we've just drawn this radius is the lower back side of our dispenser. And what I need to do is on that center line now, you now want to place a mark six inches from the bottom. And we'll place a squared off line right at that mark. Now what I'm going to need is a three quarter inch wide dado that will house the dowel for this roll, but it has to sort of come right across that center line and right at this center line, it has to drop down maybe about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little more. I might even go more like a, a one inch and that's what will hold our roll in place. So in order to do this, we're going to head over to the router table and I'll show you what I have in mind. Well, what we're after here is from the front edge, we need a three quarter inch dado. We're going to go five sixteenths deep. It needs to come along the front edge here and then it'll drop down by about an inch, inch and a half. Um, let me do one and I'll show you how it's going to look because I have a setup here of double fences that is going to assist me in doing this. So essentially I'm gonna line it up with my mark. The miter fence of my router table is set with a stop here, so I can't push it any further, but I have a mark on that fence. I'm gonna lower this down on the bit. Once I get it fully seated, I'm gonna slide it in to our fence. That will give us our drop down. Then from there, I'll take away this fence and then using push blocks, I'll push it through to finish off the cut. And I'll show you what I end up with when I'm done that. what you end up with is something like this. Get some of the sawdust out of there. And there you go. So your roll dowel will come along here and then drop into this area and hold it in place. 
So we're gonna route this on the inside surface of our other piece, and then I'll show you where we go from there. Well, I had a little bit of an oops where I wasn't thinking quite right and I didn't do these pieces opposite. You guys probably picked up on that on the video, but either way, I just repaired it or fixed it by routing straight through. We also got a little wonky down here. Um, it's no big deal. Again, I'm not too concerned. You have to remember what this is, and it is a paper holder. This is not a piece of fine furniture. So at this point now, I'm just gonna take it over to the scroll saw and cut those radius lines that we drew. Well, once we give our pieces a good sanding, it's time to start assembling this. So these holes here will be at the top. This is a ceiling mount rack in my case, not a wall rack. So the way that this works, this curve here is at the back. So on the front edge, we will place each one of our sides just like this. And I have drilled three countersink holes, just like I mentioned, and they will just sit like that. Well, we're going to need some kind of a support in order to keep this from popping out once we get the uh, roll in place. So I have a two and a half inch wide piece of three quarter inch plywood and that will mount here at the back, getting glued and screwed into place on both ends, both through the top board of the plywood and as well through our side pieces. So let me get this sand it up, glued and screwed together, and then I'll come back and show you what we're gonna do next. And with everything glued and screwed together, you should have something that looks like this. And we're not done yet, not for a little bit anyway, but for now, I'm gonna set this aside and let it dry up overnight. I really want these glue joints to be completely dry. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you when that's all done. So now here it is the next day and everything is dried up. And the next thing I want to do is we're just gonna go around and give everything a good sanding. Now with everything pretty much sanded up, we need to take the measurement for our dowel, which is going to hold our roll of paper. So you want to measure inside to inside measurement in the dados that we route it out of our side panels. And for me here, this looks like it's going to be uh, 20 and 9 sixteenths. So I'm going to cut a piece of three quarter inch dowel to fit into these slots. And once you get it cut, it will slide right into our dado area here and down into the smaller section. Uh, don't slide it past here where I messed up. <laughs> you don't want to do that. I, I did that for adjustability. That's what it was. Sure it was. All right. So we're not quite done because I don't want this here. You can see how there is some flexibility here between these two sections. I don't want to just leave it like this and uh, I want to get a brace support across here. So let's have a look at what we're going to do for that. All right, so on the front face here, I want to put a brace across this bottom edge. And you can probably see there that I have drilled and countersunk for this piece of three quarter inch plywood. But what I have done is I have taken a quarter inch round over and placed right here on this one edge. So I'm going to be placing this, it's the same length as our top three quarter piece, but I'm going to place this here as carefully as I can. I'm going to recess it back down from this front edge by one thirty second of an inch and we're gonna screw it in place. I don't wanna use glue here in case for some reason I ever have to remove it. So I'm just gonna clamp it in, do the adjustments on it, and uh, we'll screw it where it needs to be. Now I'm not sure if I gave the width of this here. I made it two and a quarter inches wide. Well, the last piece that I've cut is out of half inch ply and it will go over top of our three quarter inch piece that we just made or just installed. 
I've cut the bottom edge at a 45 degree pointing inward and I have made it one and seven eighths of an inch from the back edge right to our front point. I'm also going to put a round over on this back corner just like I did on this piece but on the front corner and we're going to screw it in place so that it is flush with the top of our three quarter piece. And now all that's left to do is mount it. So all I've done on the ceiling is I've located a ceiling joist and I'm going to mount it using some two inch screws. I'm just going to get it roughly situated where I want it and then I'll screw it in place. So I'm going to put in the other two screws. We'll get the paper in there and I'll show you what to do with this. I got it pretty straight right off the bat. <laughs> Not bad. Okay. So with our three-quarter dowel installed, we can just place our roll here, line it up with our dados, and slide it into place. Once you get it back far enough, it'll drop down into the upright dado that we put in there and sit just like this. And we're just going to cut a fresh edge. Nice and straight. And once you get that done, those two quarter uh, roundovers that we put back to back that will assist you in guiding our paper between our two pieces. This is why we left the 1 32nd gap or the recess on that three quarter piece. And as you pull it down, here I'll get rid of that sticker part, the 45 that you cut will act as a cutter so that you can tear off your next piece. And then you just have to give it a little roll and your next piece is ready to go. That's it. And there you have it. A paper roll dispenser rack thingy. <laughs> Guys, this project is no great feat. This project is nothing spectacular. But what it is, is a great way to use up scrap plywood that you had lying around. If you like the idea on the tip show of using the freezer paper in order to protect the surface of your bench and that sort of thing, and you went and purchased or were considering purchasing a larger roll of it to save yourself a few bucks, this project is a fantastic way to mount it up out of the way so that you're not tripping over it. It's not taking up usable space in your shop. It's on the ceiling. And we all know we're not up on the ceiling. At least you shouldn't be. Safety first. <laughs> so the bottom line here is that Although this is not a mind-blowing project, and although the dados that I use with the router table got a little messed up uh, by my own mistakes, no other reason than that, um, it's really not that big of a deal because the functionality of the project is absolutely spectacular. So now, instead of having to roll it out and then cut it and et cetera, et cetera, I can peel off a piece, tear it off, peel off another piece, tear it off, peel off another piece, tear it off, lay it down and do whatever I want with it. And much like I said in the tips video, the pieces are reusable depending on how much they get mangled and how much glue peels off of them. Because they have a coating on them, the glue does peel off once it dries. Um, it's a pretty inexpensive way to protect your tools, which are not inexpensive, or to protect your bench, which some of us have a pride or a sense of pride in keeping it pristine or as pristine as can be when it's a usable workbench. Either way, it's a great little afternoon project, a load of fun. Uh, they're all fun, guys, no matter how you look at it. And you know what? 
I'm sure it's going to be useful to you if you want to get yourself a roll of the freezer paper. Guys, I want to thank you very much for tuning in this week. Um, not every project has to be a blow your mind project. Not every project has to be one of those that you think, holy crap, I could never do that. But every project has to be useful to somebody. And I'm positive that this one will be because it's useful to me. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I think this project can go beyond the freezer paper. Uh, there are newsprint rolls available. Your local printing shop, usually you can get off cuts or the last end of the roll that wasn't good enough for a full printing run for extremely cheap. And what a great way to make a rack like this for a child that they could pull down the paper, tear it off, and doodle, draw, color, whatever they like. So it is a modifiable project. Think outside the box, guys, not just about what I've shown you. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope you're gonna try this for yourself, guys, and I honestly hope you're gonna join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. <laughs>